set them up. Does the Bureau practice entrapment a lot? Yeah, we get really close. We call it a nudge. A nudge. A nudge. Mm. Sometimes you just gotta give them a quick look just to see what happens. Sometimes you like to fuse and just wait for it to follow. Nothing like putting on a fake social media thing to like really get people mad. Alex Jones. Yeah, so we were after him. You are? We did what we wanted. Which was what? We took his money away. Chopped his legs off. You are being surrounded. If death comes for me today, I'm ready. It would be a poor choice to force my hand into action. And maybe we should just make every meme a char a, a, an Alex Jones meme. Every single that's good. I didn't realize how well Alex Jones' face fit on what looks like a three hundred. Like I don't know what that's from. Jerry, tell me what that's from. I have never seen this movie. Also, Bar uh, Barack Obama to uh, totally totally has the body type of a. I don't know, Vixen? I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know the characters. Haven't seen the source material. Have to study the source material. Love the meme, Jerry. Well done. Today is Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. Alex Jones will sue the FBI and CIA as undercover video reveals that they targeted him, Tucker Carlson, a bunch of journalists, and also had feds everywhere during January 6th. Ah, who's told you about that? Boy, it's tough to be right all the time. Really, it hurts sometimes. We could have gonna get tennis elbow patting ourselves on the back. Florida woman who stole Ashley Biden's diary is sentenced to jail. Attack on journalists, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see. Congressman Troy Nels joins the show, one of our favorites. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't consider myself some type of financial genius. Uh, we just work hard, right? Do our best and try to observe uh, what the, the the energy that's happening in various markets and 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 where are people moving, right? And what's going on? And what we see going on is that America is trying to go to war. J Joe Biden is start war is great for the deep state, and this is like the topic of the show. But like war is great for the deep state, and so war is being created all around the world right now. Get ready for the one that they're going to start in China. Get ready for full-scale NATO war with Russia. Uh, this is what's going to go on. This is what's going to happen. How do you know that? Gold. Gold is going through the roof. Gold. <laughs> Straight through. This always happens in the lead up to war. This always happens. Commodities go nuts. Oil, gold, silver right now. My friends at Allegiance Gold can take care of you. You can jump on that boat. You may disagree. I mean, you may disagree, but it's the fourth turning, right? It's the fourth, fourth turning. What are we gonna? What are you gonna do about it, right? Well, you can invest and you can protect yourself with Allegiance Gold. Go to protectwithbenny.com today. Call eight four four six six Benny right now. Get five thousand dollars in free silver with a qualifying purchase. Don't get fooled by inflated stock values, ladies and gentlemen. Commodities are the thing. Protectwithbenny.com today. So, uh, why is war so profitable? Well because it is the only industry that the government can control. War, the government itself, has a monopoly, an entire monopoly on violence. The government is, is a violence monopoly. That is how you should see governments. You should also see governments as, what is the point of enlightenment for our show? The point of enlightenment for our show is every government is an organized crime syndicate. It's an organized mafia. And this organized crime syndicate makes money through war. And so they need new wars. And that's why America has never been at peace. Everyone thought the World War II, hey, yo, listen, look at this. Like America's in charge of everything. There's gonna be peace. Nope, Vietnam. What happens to the guy that wanted to end Vietnam? Uh, Well, he got shot in the head. A, a, pre a president back in the day, last name Kennedy. What happened to the guy that ended Vietnam? He got impeached because the FBI spied on him, named Richard Nixon. Don't end wars. What happened to Donald Trump? Donald Trump started no new wars. Donald Trump scaled back America's footing and, and created peace. 
Donald Trump famously, can we get the clip? It's just, it warms my heart every time I see the clip. Donald Trump famously walked into North Korea. Be aware of how powerful this is. For the, for nigh on 70 years since the end of World War II, because the end of World War II is when North, the Korean War popped off, right? 1945, boom. So for nigh on 70 years, the American government has been at war with North Korea. There's been no official peace treaty signed. Uh, we lost 55,000 lives over there. And, and Donald Trump decided to effectively end that war, again, no peace treaty, by clapping Kim Jong-un on the back and walking into North Korea. And Kim Jong-un is like a fangirl, right? He's like hugging Trump. Look at this. It's amazing. That's the demarcation line. This is the DMZ. Look at how the smiling, the admiration, the love. And then he says, would you like to be the first American welcomed into North Korea uh, in peacetime? And Donald Trump says, I'd love that. And then Kim Jong-un says, can I please have your autograph? And also, can I have Dennis Rodman's autograph? And can I have a pair of golden Trump tennis sneakers, please? Because I want to play basketball in them. And Donald Trump said, yeah, totally, little fat racket man. I will do that. That's why they hate Trump. That's why they hated Kennedy and Nixon. Didn't matter what your party is. War is the monopoly that the government has. And if, if you are ending wars, if you're going against the war footing of America, then you must be destroyed. That's how these people become filthy rich. That's how they get bigger budgets. That's how they get fatter wallets. I lived in DC for 15 years. I knew plenty of people in this industry. And this is how it operates. That's why one of the largest, why is the largest amount of wealth consolidation in the country? If you're looking at wealth that is growing, you'd assume Wall Street, maybe Beverly Hills, right? Maybe entertainment industry, maybe somewhere in Florida. I don't know, Florida, a lot of people move to Florida. Nope, it's in the little counties around Washington, DC. Why? I don't know if we can grab that data, but it's really important. It's in these little counties around DC. Why? What is the industry that DC creates? War. That's it. Largest office building in the world is the Pentagon. War. That's what they want. And it's what they uh, gravitate towards because it's how they all get rich. And so I say all that to talk about the nature of the deep state. The nature of the deep state is they wish for war. And when they run out of wars to fight potentially internationally, then they wish to turn the war making and espionage apparatus inward to go after the enemy's domestic. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is some of the research we've been doing with our friend Tucker Carlson, with our friend Alex Jones, with our ally Elon Musk. And well, it's why Joe Biden is so useful to these people. And I'll, I'll end by saying this, okay? And, and before we get to our first story, the reason why Joe Biden is so useful is that he creates no friction to that system. Joe Biden encourages more war. Ukraine has been awesome for Joe Biden. Joe Biden has been awesome for Ukraine. And what I mean by that is the deep state, the people who enrich themselves off the lavish spending that the American taxpayers are willing to sacrifice for if we assume that a cause is noble. Vietnam, North Korea, Iraq, Afghanistan, go down the list. And Joe Biden and the apparatus and the propaganda machines were able to convince some people, I mean, there are still flags. You can still see random Ukraine flags, right? Flying in neighborhoods. What the hell is wrong with these people, right? But they were able to convince the smooth brains out there that we should fund Ukraine. And what does that mean? That means writing taxpayer dollars that don't go anywhere to Ukraine because Ukraine's losing the war. I mean, Ukraine was ready to sue for peace in 2022, is two years ago. Ukraine was ready to go to the peace table. Like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want to do this. We want to destroy our population, destroy an entire generation, like wreck the country. We don't do that. They were ready to go to peace. We prevented it. We stopped peace. Joe Biden stopped peace. 
Joe Biden provides no friction to that system, to the monopoly on violence that our government has. And so Joe Biden, well, he's very, very useful. In fact, it's very interesting. A clip from today. Uh, this clip is of Joe Biden doing an interview about his legacy and Mr. Mr. Joe Biden, a resident of the White House, sitting in the Oval Office, and he tells you exactly what he thinks his legacy should be. He mentions Vietnam in this bumbling ass answer. But like that sort of shows you like where he's where his head's at. He wants to be a Vietnam president. He wants to create endless war. He wants to create pointless war. In his diseased, archaic, cobwebbed, foggy brain, Joe Biden, the first thing that comes to mind in this painful clip is Vietnam. That's what he wants. That was primo, primo time for the deep state, expanding all their powers, crushing our civil liberties, and creating war. The only monopoly the government has, a monopoly on violence. Ladies and gentlemen, here's our Biden health update of the day. Um, Broke brain. <laughs> Did you spend a lot of time thinking about what your legacy would look like? Well, I hope, I hope the legacy is that uh, I kept my word that I said that the reason I was running was to help change the life of ordinary people and reduce the prospect of war. And uh, because of Vietnam, and, uh, and, uh, and when I ran, I said that I was once asked, well, why I wouldn't when I was one of 29 years old, so it must be a secret. And I said, yeah, the secret you got to ask yourself is, what are you willing to lose over? You figure out what you're willing to lose over, you got an idea of what you should be doing. Mm. And so I hope my legacy is that I was honest, straightforward, and did what I said. <laughs> What's your legacy going to be? You ask a guy. And he goes, he goes, ah, you know, my legacy is going to be Vietnam. What year is it? Right? There's a meme of uh, Robin Williams. What year is it from Jumanji? Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? He can barely, you see like the, also the camera angle. Give this guy, give this guy an honorable mention at the Academy Awards. Whoever decided to film Joe Biden from the, like looking straight up at his chin so that you see his eye, he looks like a, he looks like a pirate that's been floating face first, like in salt water, getting stung by puffer fish is somewhere in the Caribbean and he brings his head out of the water. Is it been just drunk? on rum pirates of the caribbean look at that look at the look at the look on the guy's face no that's not the bad angle no 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 keep going no 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 no, no. go back go back go back go back uh, look, uh, uh, look at him try and like come up with an idea uh, 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 he's like struggling way to go cameraman way to go show hit them angles yeah not great not good joe biden uh, also at a uh, war ceremony yesterday, struggled to walk. Here you go. Can't, um, you know, this is supposed to be the commander in chief. Such vigor, such vitality. <laughs> Joe Biden. <laughs> uh, where, where am I going? <laughs> Why are your arms like that? What's wrong with your arms? Why do they do that? I tend to think that I use my arms maybe too much during the show. We talk, right? We're moving. And I, whenever I'm on a phone call, I'm like doing, you know, I'm like, well, if I'm on a phone call, I'm using my hands. You know, you just kind of flu fluidity in your gait is what it's called. Why are you doing that? Why you walk like that? Why would I do the show like this? Who does the show like this? Who would do this? I don't understand. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't get it. So this is Joe Biden. And unfortunately, uh, this is the lot that we have right now, currently as a country. Uh, we have a lot that says we have this guy. He doesn't have all of his faculties and he is leading. He's sleepwalking us directly into multiple conflicts because that is what the people who are in control of him are pushing him to do. 
the people that are in control of Joe Biden push him into these conflicts and they want forever war because that, ladies and gentlemen, is what they have a monopoly over. And so we go deep down the rabbit holes into the images of a undercover recording yesterday, a CIA agent, an FBI agent, former, was caught on undercover camera talking about how that same war apparatus has been turned on American citizens. And this is shocking. It should be the number one story in the entire world because it's exactly what they did to Julian Assange. It's exactly what they did to Edward Snowden. They are turning the apparatus of war inward on the American people. That's what both of those both of those journalists exposed, right? That the these massive espionage systems and the teeth of war have now been turned on the American people. And this is what we found out yesterday. We found out that Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson, among others, are being directly targeted by our government. Some of those things might be shocking to you. Some of them should probably come as, well, uh, not so shocking if you've been following the news and that there were plenty of feds inside the January 6th audience. Now, I, I do got to tell you that before we jump into this and the, the allegations here, that we on this program have been rip roaring when it comes to the January 6th fed embed. Okay. Like this has been something that we've been covering for a long time. So we, we can't play all the footage. It take the next 27 hours, all the curiosities that happened during January 6th. We can play you this one though. This one, I still have yet to see any actual explanation as to what's happening here. This is a dude who's allegedly a very violent protester, right? He's got a helmet on and a mask on. He's been handcuffed. So he must've been behaving very, very badly. And he's gotten handcuffed and now he fist bumps the cops who were cuffing him. What the hell is that about? Why are you fist bumping the guys arresting you? Doesn't normally happen. That's a little strange. Some, some have speculated that this is a fed. And then this guy was able to show his credentials and he was able to get a free pass here and was able to effectively have a get out of jail free card. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, some members of the show, people who are friends of the show, like Congressman Clay Higgins, has gone have gone on national TV and said that there were feds all over the crowd during January 6th, like this. The FBI was, was not only involved in the act, actions on January 6th from within, they had, uh, I suspect, uh, over 200 agents embedded within the crowd, including agents, or as they would call human assets, uh, inside the Capitol dressed as Trump supporters before the doors were opened. Um, beyond that, the FBI had embedded themselves and infiltrated uh, online chat groups and, and websites and social media accounts across the country with any group that was discussing uh, objections to COVID oppression. And the FBI, you know, effectively infiltrated those groups. And when you track the, the text threads and the communications within those groups and find the origins of suggestions of potential violence or, or an active occupation of the Capitol on January 6th, you'll, you'll find that those, those messages were led by members of the groups that ended up to be the FBI agents that had infiltrated the groups. So here we are. We have a situation where you have members of Congress saying they've looked at the footage and seen FBI agents walk through the Capitol, change into MAGA gear, LARPing as MAGA supporters before the Capitol was breached. So what hand did our government have to play in all of this? And more importantly, what are they doing to destroy independent journalists? Uh, well, now we know, okay, we have the contractor who was, according to the undercover footage, a contractor for the FBI during January 6th. This guy worked with some of the federal agents who were in the Capitol on January 6th. 
looking forward for to the uh, full investigation here via Congress. We won't hold our breaths, but this CIA, he's a current CIA contractor and he's caught on camera. This is a CIA boss caught on camera, uh, divulging quite a bit of interesting information about how these agencies operate. First off, the background of the contractor, okay? And then we'll get to the breaking news of Alex Jones actually suing the CIA and FBI that our show was able to break last night. Uh, the background of the contractor, not in dispute. Uh, this guy's got a LinkedIn and everything. Uh, verified FBI, CIA. For, um, how I this without, I'm not supposed to tell people kind of job. I say intelligence, what do you think? CIA? Yep. Oh, you work for the CIA? I do. That's incredible. I'm a contracting officer. That's amazing. So I deal a lot with like different agencies. Uh, we're contracting with like uh, Director of National Intelligence to do stuff. We do Navy, Army, any of them really. I just FBI. I used to work for the FBI, so really? they threw the FBI at me. They're like, here, you used to work there. Oh, I'm permanent. I'm so, yeah. Good. Well, why do they call it contracting? Because I do the contract. <laughs> I do all the legal contracts, I fly out to vendors and evaluate them. I love the agency. Good for you. I like the Bureau too. The Bureau was a lot of fun. I got to do a lot of cool stuff at the Bureau. I was the guy in the back of the truck in the van. So this guy's bragging about his pedigree and then he begins to sing like a songbird. Because we, because we started with the January 6th, just again, patting ourselves a little bit on the back here. We started with the January 6th issue. Why not like jump in here? How many federal agents were there on January 6th? Let's go. I thought you said that there were FBI agents in the crowd at J6. There are. There always are when there's a big protest in D.C. Just in case it gets out of hand like that. They, but there, they wasn't, there wasn't they? enough to turn that tide. I mean, I'm talking they maybe have 20. You needed 1,000 to get rid of that crowd. So they had like, tw oh, that was on just 20? Yeah, just to go through and observe and see what I can hear, you know, that kind of thing. Wow. That, yeah, definitely. They needed a thousand at least. Wow. Well, see, that's also Capitol Police jurisdiction. They're in charge. So that, why yeah. they didn't have more on hand, I don't know. The Bureau didn't really want people knowing that they were in the crowd. Mm-hmm. Because that would be overstepping their bounds. A little bit. Do people know that? Do, why? Did people know that the Bureau was in the crowd? No, nope, and probably never will. Uh, you know agents that were there? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. They the agency now. Wow. You know agents that were there? Yeah, they work at the CIA now. They got a, they got a raise. Also, I mean, it does, does make you wonder. And we, we put the guy's resume up on screen, okay? So like, like, let's, let's go to the LinkedIn. We have no reason to, nobody's disputed that this is false or is a fake LinkedIn, okay? Or this guy doesn't exist or doesn't work for the federal government. So there you go. You have FBI um, and immigration services uh, and department of, so there's no, there's no CIA on there, but the CIA has cutouts inside of these various agencies. So that's what you're left to assume here, right? So the guy says he works for the CIA now and that he's doing, he's doing immigration services effectively for the CIA as like as a boss. So here you go. So here's my question about all this. Does it, does it look like so VA, right? VA, FBI, DHS, CIA. Uh, nobody's saying that this is fake or that this has been doctored or anything. This is the guy's resume. All right. Gavin O'Blennis. Here's my question. Huh? Are they, are these guys supposed to be like good at espionage? Are these guys supposed to be like good at spies? Why are they spilling their guts? Why does this happen every single time? Like every single time. Why are they spilling their guts? James O'Keefe wears a thong, and then these guys just like, we'll tell them the nuclear codes. Tell them the nuclear codes. It's incredible. James O'Keefe puts on a thong, a, a Borat, a Borat thong, and a um, Groucho Marx, like Groucho Marx pair of glasses with a no rubber nose and a mustache. Not even that. And then, I know Jerry's like, uh, like ra rabidly trying to make this meme. And then they, and then they, these guys just spill their guts about national secrets. We just had a guy at the White House doing cybersecurity who's like telling us all about how Joe Biden has dementia. Well, not medically, not clinically yet, 
But yeah, Joe Biden has dementia. It's cra- I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. I thought these guys were, I thought they're all sending their best, okay? And I'm really glad this stuff comes out. It's the final thing I'll say on it. Really glad this stuff comes out because it shows you what's happening in D.C. It shows you that Washington, D.C. should actually be viewed not as like our best and brightest and our sharp, you know, our sharpest, smartest people, but actually some of the most venal, nihilistic, uh, narcissistic cretins that actually just want power over you and will do anything for power over you. It's incredible. I mean, I was just at a just had a breakfast this morning. Um, not going to reveal with who somebody who worked in the Trump administration and was just will t- and anybody who worked in the Trump administration will tell you the same thing every single time you talk to them. Find somebody who worked in the Trump administration. There's thousands of people out there who worked in the Trump administration. Find somebody and then ask them, um, what was it like in your department? Doesn't matter where they are. Pentagon, State Department, HUD, doesn't matter. Department of Education shouldn't even exist. HUD shouldn't exist. Department of Energy shouldn't exist. Like, find somebody who worked there and say, what was it like working there? What was it like when the, with the government employees working there? Did they want to implement Donald Trump's policies? W- were they acting as government employees that were implementing Trump's policies? What I was told this morning from a high-ranking official uh, in, in Trump universe uh, was that every second of every day, the career government appointees were trying to usurp. Were try- every day was how do we stop Donald Trump's orders from going forward? How do we scuttle them? How do we, as a federal bureaucracy, destroy the sitting president and prevent his orders from going forward? Because everyone's staffed with Gavin O'Blenis. Because Gavin O'Blenis is every single employee in Washington, D.C. They are not to be looked up to. They are to be seen as political adversaries. They are activists, ladies and gentlemen. And so it's like, I love the mask off moment here. I really do. So speaking of masks off, uh, there was a massive lawsuit against Alex Jones. Uh, How did that lawsuit move forward? The federal government didn't find any crimes, couldn't charge Alex Jones with any crimes or anything. Clearly the federal government doesn't like Alex Jones. So how did that lawsuit move forward? How could you have a massive lawsuit against Alex Jones? Clearly the federal government didn't have any part in that, did they? Oh, Gavin's got the goods. So with Alex Jones, you were watching him long before anything ended up happening. Probably, it wasn't my office, but I mean, we would have have been well aware of what he was doing. And the goal with him was what, just to bankrupt him? Oh, pretty much. And we let the families do it. And that, what? We let the families do it. Were they encouraged to do that by the bureau? Like nudged? We don't encourage people. But like, we, we just say there's no federal statute being broken. But you do have the option for a civil, for a civil case. And it's a pretty good case. Nice. In our opinion. So, oh, that makes so much sense. I have a cousin who's a lawyer. So that's a lot of these cases. They're they're kind of encouraged by the FBI. Yeah, like there's nothing federally, federal law we can do. But civilly, we can go at them that way and chop his legs off. And they did. Yeah. So the FBI was happy. We didn't care. We were like, oh. Basically, the citizens did your job. Yeah. Wow, so you can encourage a civil lawsuit. Not encourage. Educate. I've been working in the media space for close to 20 years. And I have a lot of people that I don't like. A lot of people that I think their work is trash. I talk about them all the time on the programs. Don Lemon, he's just a clown, right? Like there's a lot of pundits who I think are totally operational assets of the security state here in the country. They're not actual reporters. There's a lot of people who are like so cretinous and so dis- so utterly shamelessly dishonest. They're such liars. But let me tell you something that I would never want. I'll just use Don Lemon because Don Lemon happens to be such a humiliating embarrassment right now. Viewership on his show is down 95% since his uh, attack job on Elon Musk that got him fired from the X platform. 
Mr. I want a Cybertruck in space. Elon, pay me all my money. So Don Lemon is somebody who I just cannot, I mean, I cannot talk. He's like a distillation of everything that is wrong with so-called journalism today. The fact that he would work at CNN for 20 years is just so disreputable, so despicable. But let me tell you something that I would never cheer. I would never cheer Don Lemon being attacked by our federal government. I disagree. I cannot find a single thing I agree with Don Lemon on. Nothing. Nothing. I can't think of somebody that I would probably disagree with uh, more. Pound for pound. Here's Don Lemon's show viewership. <laughs> it's like Enron stock. It's really good. Good job, Don. So, we have... <laughs> so embarrassing. Oh, no. Anyway, careful with your shade. Careful with your shade. I'm telling you this. I would be... If this were the government saying this about Don Lemon, I would also be doing a show like this. If this were the, our intelligence agencies going after Don Lemon to try and destroy him or cut his legs off or force majeure a massive lawsuit to destroy him forever, if the government was sh shockingly like on my side and wishing to go after Don Lemon, then I would also be doing this exact same show saying it's wrong. I would be defending Don Lemon. It actually doesn't matter that it's Alex Jones. It's wrong. You may disagree with the guy. You may disagree with everything he said, as I do with Don Lemon. You should still agree with his right to say it, as long as he's not breaking any laws. As long as he's not hurting anybody. The guy, the guy straight up admits Alex Jones didn't break any law, didn't hurt anybody. Yet we encourage the, his destruction because we don't like him and we cut his legs off. Uh, wow. Would you look at that? They're also going after Tucker. This reporting confirmed. Here we go. Who would be like a big influence that you're, influencer that you're after? You, like a, I don't know, like a, I don't even know these names, like a Fox News person or like a Tucker Carlson or like a, uh, Oh, I'm sure he's a uh, Right. You always want the biggest and loudest. Like that, what was his name? The one that said uh, the Sandy Hook didn't happen. Alex loud. Jones. Yeah, so we were after him. You are? Airport. Are you still after him? No. Why? Because he's broke. He got found guilty and had to pay like $100 million. So what, why were you after him? We're not anymore. Just to get the money from him? Yeah. Was that court case used? Was that a CIA sure thing? was. That was the agency thing? Actually, it was a defamation case, mm. so it's a civil, not <clears throat> government. But we were looking at all of his followers, commenting, following, like, who's that going to be this too? right? So even though it's technically not our, well, not the agency, definitely, but the, the Bureau, for instance, yeah, it's not our purview, it's a civil, it's a civil matter. But since they got all this access to his stuff, and it's there, what can we go find. And did you find anything? I can't tell you. Oh, we did. Uh, but, so, you know, it's, it's just kind of like, you know, realize the opportunity that you have. Hmm. Realize the opportunity that you have. And who was this man talking to? Well, we don't know. We've created an artist's rendering of what we think it's going to be based on what we talked about earlier. We think that it is, James O'Keefe in a Borat in a Borat bikini with a Groucho Marx costume. <laughs> Get it off the screen! I don't need to see. I look at the other side of the hidden camera. That may be on one side of the hidden camera. We look at the other side, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, well done, Jerry. You didn't. Didn't know that. Didn't know that was gonna be. Didn't know that was gonna be up. Jerry also got the uh, Joe Biden. What year is it? Uh, this is this is why we have a professional memer on staff uh, at all times. Okay, Joe Biden was the only, what year is it? No, you gotta get the Biden one. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Joe Biden looks as bad as I thought he would with a beard. He looks dead. He, looks, he didn't get like some people become more masculine. 
or like with, with beards, some people like totally change their look and maybe they become more austere. Uh, Joe Biden looks just way creepier. He really does look like a homeless guy with a grocery bag full of piss stained newspapers standing at the bus stop. Hi, here is it. Good job, Jerry. So uh, we knew what time it was. We certainly knew what year it was. And it was time to call Alex Jones. We did so last night on our show, Tenant Media. Um, and we asked him about this investigation from Sound Investigations. I want to make sure, let's make sure that we actually put up the people who are responsible for this investigation. Uh, they're called Sound Investigations. I, for one, had never heard of them before. Uh, but this is their account. This is the account that actually broke all the news uh, last night. And it's really going to be important for us to uh, obviously support the people who are doing this journalism, right? So I don't know much about this group. Uh, we have reached out. Um, and uh, this is this is the the account. Pop up the account there. Um, and uh, there you go. So sound investigations this is where this is where they're from. Uh, this is what they are. And it sounds like they're doing sound investigations. Alex Jones, we did know who to call, though, for all this. Alex Jones, last night, popped on and said, oh, by the way, I'm going to be suing the CIA and FBI on civil rights grounds for violating my civil rights and for racketeering. Here you go. Now that this has come out, this is a FBI agent, a CIA boss. He's a contract manager over large contract operations. That's a boss. Uh, that's like a mini section chief saying all of this and and admitting all of this like it's no big deal. He needs to be subpoenaed by Congress. Uh, I am planning uh, to launch a lawsuit uh, against the CIA and the FBI. We have to bring all this out. Well, I'm talking to different law firms right now that specialize in this. I'm going to get off the feed with you. I'm, I'm going to get back on the phone with lawyers. It's obviously a civil rights violation. <laughs> it's a government racketeering operation uh, using cutouts. So he's going to be suing the federal government. He welcomed, obviously, uh, some big time help. And in fact, last night, Elon Musk responded to this clip with a uh, trademark exclamation point, uh, in which we were happy to get from Elon. But Alex Jones saying, hey, listen, it'd be really nice to have Elon Musk's help in suing the federal government because they're coming after independent journalists like me. Watch. And they're on the wrong side of history. I don't want a war with the government. I don't like having to take these crooks on, but it's a clear and present danger to everybody. And it's something I've got to do. It's better to die on your feet than live on your knees. But history's shown people that live on their feet, they live a lot longer and are freer than people that live on their knees and end up being slaves or killed. Living on your knees is what gets your ass killed. And I'm not living on my knees. This is going viral. Elon Musk has responded. He wants an investigation. He's calling it very disturbing. We know he's their new big target along with Trump. And so the harder they hit Musk, the harder he hits back. Uh, so the globalists are making enemies a lot, lot, lot faster than we are. Liberty is incredibly popular everywhere. It was actually really like we'd, we'd done one other interview with Alex Jones. It was actually really, really inspiring. It's, it's really neat. I mean, it's what can you say about Alex Jones? Like the guy is a machine. He is somebody who has been right about so much. And it actually, it's, it kind of creeps you out how right Alex has been about so many things. I have a story that is, that, that, that like, is what that is wild about Alex Jones. You can go watch, obviously, the Tucker Carlson interviews with Alex Jones. Tucker goes through and actually does a really beautiful job of highlighting and setting in sequence every single thing that Alex Jones has been right about. And it's quite creepy. And it's a little scary what the guy's predicting because, of course, he's predicting World War III now. But again, Alex Jones is one of those guys who, whether you disagree with everything he says or whether you agree with everything he says, he is a man who has a right to speak because we're all Americans and that's our birthright. We have a right to speak. You may disagree with some of the things Tucker Carlson says. Tucker Carlson, with every passing day, uh, becomes more controversial. You may not, you may love it. You may love it. You may hate it. Kind of depends. I happen to love it. But Alex Jones, uh, when asked, when we asked about Tucker Carlson yesterday, and the um, incredible allegation that they are, they have Tucker Carlson on a list. This was the uh, rather unexpected answer. It includes Godzilla. Let's go. 
just really quickly, Tucker Carlson is mentioned here alongside you, saying that Tucker Carlson is on a list, that they're watching him. Uh, can you expound on that? Do you, what, do you, what do you make of that? Tucker Carlson said three years ago, I was just called by a high-level source of the government that the NSA is spying on me and giving my private text messages about going to Russia for a Putin interview in the Washington Post. And a month later, the Washington Post goes, yeah, it's true. We got his text messages and we, the CIA gave it to us and the NSA. Totally illegal. There's been all sorts of harassment behind the scenes. Of course, he's on a list. I mean, look, here's how the list goes now, okay, of, of, of American citizens. He goes, Donald Trump, Elon Musk, and, and, and Elon's almost there. Donald Trump, Elon Musk, and then it goes Tucker Carlson, and then it goes Alex Jones, and then it moves down from there. I was just talking to Joe Rogan yesterday. It wasn't a private, I mean, I guess it's a private conversation, I shouldn't say it, but I mean, the point is, he was like, thank God for Elon, because he's taking all the heat for us. I mean, Joe understands that, so do I. Believe it, Elon doesn't want to be the number one target. When he gets attacked, though, he's going he's to hit back. So I guarantee you, Elon's happy. Trump's out there taking the main brunt. So it's Trump and then Elon that are up there like the Godzilla's fighting Megalon of the three, you know, headed dragon. And we're like the military fighting with Godzilla with our missile launchers, you know, shooting at the dragon, trying to help Godzilla. So it's like Trump and just like two Godzillas are out there fighting the globalists. And I'm like an army general. Like, fire the missiles, fire the missiles, the three headed dragon. I mean, the three headed dragon like zaps through electricity. Our troops are all blowing up. I mean, it's, I mean, just think about Godzilla movie. That's basically what this is. It's amazing. Uh, Tucker Carlson, Donald Trump, Alex Jones, th plenty to plenty to disagree with them on. Many Americans do disagree with them on some things. OK, but you cannot deny that these guys are entertaining, man. They are entertaining. When was the last time you like laughed at a Chris Cuomo or Anderson Cooper segment? When was the last time you laughed at anything Joe Biden did, like in a way that you would laugh with him, not at him? They're funny. These guys are funny. And that's why people are drawn to them. Alex Jones told me he can't, he's on vacation right now and he can't like move five feet without people like complimenting him and, and clapping him on the back and saying, thank you and shaking his hand. And everybody should be okay with that. But Alex Jones, Tucker Carlson, Donald Trump, what do they all have in common? They were against forever war. They were against forever. They were against the monopoly on violence that our government has. And they called out these demons because that's just what you are. If you want war all the time, the older you get and the wiser you get, the more you realize that there's really very few, very few examples in human history of a just war. Very few. Generally, there's just two devils fighting on both sides. OK, and that includes a lot of American wars. And it's tough to say that, but it's true. And when you become a parent and when you start paying your taxes and you realize what that money's going to, you realize how evil this stuff really is. When you see the cost of war, you realize how evil that really is. And when it's your sons and daughters signing up, because it sure as hell ain't John Kerry's sons and daughters signing up, right? Like when you see it, then you, you understand, right? And it, it comes real to you. Like this is something that really could affect you. And so, you really, you really do sincerely want to stop uh, the system. Something that Alex Jones, something that Tucker Carlson, something that Elon Musk, something that Joe Rogan, something that Donald Trump, they all have in common. It's like the through line is the hatred of the deep state and their monopoly on violence. And so, as we've seen, the deep state turning on them, what will this lawsuit result in? I don't know. It would result in uh, one, one hell of a discovery. I can tell you that. It would be very, very interesting. So we'll see what Alex Jones has to do. It's really neat to like be able to break news with Alex Jones uh, yesterday on this topic. He did talk about being, he did talk about being uh, Donald Trump being Godzilla and the deep state. Now Jerry's been working on a meme about Godzilla and the deep state. Donald Trump, Elon Musk. I'm not sure it's ready for publication, but Jerry says just let's just go with it. Okay, so we're just gonna go with it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to go with our with what we could do in short period of time. Our meme of Donald Trump versus the deep state with the help of Elon Musk. Let's go.
Well, there you go. All right. It's a high art. Okay. It's high art. All right. It's high. Don't get it. Don't, don't, don't mess with the artistic process. All right. On this program, our artistic process is fueled entirely by the caffeine that pulsates through our body at every moment. Our sweet, sweet, delicious friends at Blackout Coffee keeps our mugs filled to the brim, as this one is, so I will carry it very, very carefully. And we are deeply thankful for them keeping this show running and giving us the juice that we need. This juice is 100% American coffee, 0% grift. Blackout Coffee is 100% committed to conservative values. From the sourcing of the beans, roasting process, customer support, and shipping, they are awesome. Go to blackoutcoffee.com slash Benny. Use the coupon code Benny for 20% off your first over to blackoutcoffee.com slash Benny. Be awake, not woke. So a member of Congress that kind of reminds us of that Godzilla meme uh, is joining the program right now. Uh, he's somebody who's... Every single time we see him on TV or every single time we see him on the House floor, he's he's very much like metaphorically ripping the skull off of something uh, and holding it up as a trophy and screaming and doing a just damn good job of it. The man who is known for his fine apparel at the State of the Union, the best dressed at the State of the Union. If we don't have it in the script, we got to get it, boys. Uh, the great Troy Nels from Judiciary from Texas 22 right now. You'll never get a better intro. No, I love it, Benny. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Okay. So, so let's, let's uh, chat a little bit. Uh, Mayorkas impeachment. I know this is, uh, is something that is very near and dear to your heart. Somebody from Texas, somebody who's been a hawk on this immigration issue for a very long time. Um, we had a Senator on yesterday saying that Roger Marshall saying he's going to do everything They'll They'll grind the Senate to a halt, uh, to get this impeachment process going. Uh, do you see it going anywhere as it's left the house? No, I may personally, I don't, I think Chuck Schumer, he seems to be in charge of Congress over the past few months. I think if you sent those articles over there, um, uh, I think Chuck Schumer will, will bury it. He'll dismiss immediately. I think it's, uh, I just don't see it going anywhere. It just doesn't. Um, I, I voted for impeachment. Uh, obviously, I think that Mayorkas is an absolute disaster. He's a failure. Uh, and uh, he has done things that are impeachable, his offenses. So, but I just don't think anything's going to happen in the Senate. It just doesn't. Nothing happens over there. Benny, come on. Uh, yeah. It, 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 I mean, if it's not billions of dollars to Ukraine, it doesn't, well, doesn't move. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. right. Doesn't move. So FISA, that's the big news of the day. Uh, FISA, this is uh, obviously we're covering the undercover footage of an FBI, former FBI agent, CIA agent, guy named Gavin O'Blenis, who's on camera saying that they spied on Tucker Carlson. That Tucker Carlson has those receipts, that they spied on Alex Jones. And now Congress is on the foot of all that is going to reauthorize FISA so the government can continue to spy on us. What the hell, man? Yeah, that's a big problem. It's a lot of, I mean, that's what we're probably going to see on Thursday, a vote up here on Thursday. Uh, later today, we have a, a top secret briefing. I'm sure I'm going to hear what the Intelligence Committee and some others are going to say. If we do not reauthorize FISA, we will have more terrorist attacks, this and that. I tell you, when you look at what the FBI did in this FISA under Carter Page years ago, Obviously, Carter Page was affiliated with the Trump campaign. What they did on spying on him, the the uh, the warrantless searches. I mean, they totally destroyed that man. They made him sound like he was an absolute, you know, a terrorist. And he's American. You don't. And FISA said you don't spy on Americans. You spy on foreigners in foreign countries, not even the foreigners that are here. But the FBI's abused it more than one time. We just can't have it. And so I will not support, I believe President Trump said, you know what, you got to kill the FISA. We can't have it. They spied on him. And do you remember when John, when Durham came in with that Durham report? I had an opportunity to question the FBI Director Ray. And, and I said, you know what, what Durham uncovered about the abuses of FISA related to Carter Page, if you don't recall, Benny, we got to remind the American people. Remember they said Trump was in Russia at the Ritz-Carlton? He was at the Ritz Carlton and there were prostitutes, shh, prostitutes that were peeing on him. Remember that? I've got it here. This is Comey's report. 
This is Comey and the paper. I don't know if Trump was with prostitutes peeing on each other in Moscow. Now, this is four or five months before a general election. What do you think the local housewife is going to think across the America to think this Donald Trump guy is with prostitutes? He's married. He's got a beautiful bride, a family. This is how bad and how abusive the FBI was on the Trump campaign. I'm a no on FISA. I'm a no. Uh, Mike Johnson is seemingly backing uh, the reauthorization of FISA. I mean, I understand that Speaker Johnson's in a tough position. I, I don't I don't envy the guy at all. However, it does seem like this is something that he's he's backing sort of this warrantless search. Is that going you know, I mean, is, is that is that going to pass? Is that going to work with the Republicans? I can't see that working. I think Andy Biggs out of Arizona, I think Andy has a uh, uh, an amendment out there that says you got to get a warrant and you should get a warrant. I think uh, Chairman Jordan, too. Uh, Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan supports the warrant. So if you don't get the warrant out there, you don't have really any any control here or any justification to spy as they have. And that, I tell you, what you started out with, too, about what they've done to Alex Jones and that that his name is what Oblenis, Gavin Oblenis, with that interview, uh, former FBI, working with the FBI, now with the CIA. Alex Jones has the right to go after him. But what we got to do is we got to confirm what this knucklehead is saying. Try to verify. You know, he just, you kind of look at the guy. He looks like he's a little goofy. Uh, I would try to go out there and try to confirm what he is saying, uh, specifically as it relates to 20 or so FBI agents embedded into the crowd on January 6th. You know, you got to verify some of these things this guy was saying. So, so you have a colleague who's Clay Higgins of Louisiana, and he said that he has verified proof that there were FBI agents there on January 6th. You're on the judiciary and you could subpoena, yeah. obviously, the judiciary. They, the DOJ is in control of the FBI, right? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I think you're referring to uh, Representative Clay Higgins, an old law dog, great guy, great respected member up here. And, and I think the American people have a right to know what truly took place on January 6th. But the American people didn't hear very, very little truth, if any at all, from the January 6th sham committee under Benny Thompson. And he was the puppet. Nancy Pelosi was the puppet master. A few months ago, I asked, I, I said, I said, listen, uh, Speaker Johnson, we need to form a select committee, a select committee to look into the select committee. And I said, the select committee we should form should be all Republicans because that's what they had. That's what Nancy got when she rejected me, Jim Jordan, Kelly Armstrong, Jim Banks. You know, she rejected us. So why don't we form a select committee made up of Republicans so we can really dive into this January 6th select committee? And I was uh, I, I couldn't get it done. He, he refused to do so. So but I think the American people deserve to know more about January 6th and what the sham committee with Liz Cheney and the others did to Donald Trump, blaming Donald Trump for everything. Shame on them. Why would they delete all the records? Well, I mean, what, what, what possible purpose would you have for deleting all of the records? because they act, they, they didn't behave very well now. They're gonna to try to destroy the evidence. I think we're doing a, we're trying to do what we can uh, with house admin. I think uh, uh, Barry Laudermilk is doing, is doing a, trying to do what he can to try to release more of the, 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 the videos of January 6th, but I think subpoenas should have gone out months ago already uh, because you know, uh, that that they're going to talk about January 6th for the general election with Sleepy Joe. They're going to talk about it, make Trump look like he was just trying to overthrow the government. So in between January 6th and the abortion conversation you're having, what the hell else do the Democrats going to talk about? They can't talk about the uh, the inflation or the crime or the border or anything else, the endless wars. They're going to talk about abortion in January 6th. That's what I think you'll see. The American people will see on their televisions over the summer and into the fall. So this FISA reauthorization, the yeah. intel agencies are gonna come into Congress and they're gonna say, hey, there's gonna be a big terrorist attack, so you gotta let us, you know, there's gonna be a terrorist attack because of the open border, so you gotta give us more power, right? Yeah. And, and that's how it's gonna work. And they're gonna say, oh, we've created this problem by allowing yeah. terrorists into the nation uh, through the open border. You have yeah. a new book out, by the way, Borderless by Design, a Trump endorsed book uh, about this exact topic. Of course, you're from Texas, so you would know better than almost anyone. Um, mm -hmm. And they're going to try and tell the story without, 
I mean, I've never seen any of these people like push for closing the border. Like I've never seen any statements. They and they can make statements, right? They made statements day and night about Donald Trump. They can mm -hmm. make statements. None of them's ever pushed to actually like solve the crisis. They're just going to use the crisis for more mm -hmm. power to destroy our civil liberties. Yeah. So if the intel, why doesn't the intel community get out front of this and get out front, get the FBI director to come in and say, hey, listen, we have a problem now in the United States because our southern border is so porous and we have individuals coming in here from China and every other place, Hamas, everybody else. We should be concerned about the welfare and the safety of the American people because of this borderless uh, uh, southern border, what we have down in the southern border through this administration, they're not gonna do that. I'm not reauthorizing FISA for Benny for the FBI to abuse what they've abused for years. They're not gonna change your behavior. You can try to throw all this language in this FISA reauthorization, but I don't think they're gonna change the behavior. So the people coming into this country are all by design. Biden has allowed the people to come in for what, over three years now. Nothing's gonna change with this administration. Nothing, Benny, unfortunately, nothing's going to change in Congress. The only thing that changes this country and get it back in the right direction is Donald J. Trump. That's it. We're going to do nothing up here to secure the southern border. It's not happening. I hate to share that with you and my constituents back in, but we're not going to do anything to secure the southern border. Not with this administration. Yeah. I mean, it seems like not even Texas can lock up criminals who we just played the footage. They stormed the border. They trampled on our soldiers. Yeah. And that in Texas and they were released. They were released by a judge like almost immediately. So not even in Texas. What a broken system. You know, truly. It is. It what is. a broken system. You say you say that only Donald Trump, uh, nothing's going to change until Donald Trump gets back into office and you put your money where your mouth is or at least your fashion where your mouth is during the state of the union um we'll never we'll never forget your never surrender shirt i think that's the official trump shirt uh from mm -hmm. the trump store with donald trump's mugshot on it and your exquisite bow tie along with the lake and riley pin and so uh some of your colleagues there uh obviously just wearing the suit and tie but you yeah. sir you sir went big yeah, I like the bow tie. I probably need to cut back on the brownies and the cookies. You can see that a little bit. But overall, I thought I looked damper that uh, that evening. And it just was there to, to send the message. And that is I and the people, the patriots across this gate country, that is part of that mega movement, that Make America Great Again movement. I just want to let the American people know that there are people in Congress that supports Donald J. Trump to the end. And I will fight like hell, do everything I possibly can, that he can come back, get reelected, and save this country. He's got to save our country. He's the only one that can do it. We had a pretty decent group on the stage, but nobody compares to Donald J. Trump. So once we get Trump in there, all of our country's ills will end. They'll all end. He'll fix it all. He will end the war in Ukraine. I predict Donald Trump wins. Putin's out of Ukraine by April 1st. That's He's gone. I mean, it's our, it's a, that's, that's our dream. That's our dream. I like, I'm a, like as a father, as somebody who's going to eventually have draft age children, I don't yeah. want war. I don't want it as a taxpayer. Yeah. I don't want war. Uh, yeah. did, just final, final question, Congressman, did Donald Trump call you about that outfit? I mean, it's pretty impressive to wear his mugshot to the state of the union. Well, we've had, we've had some conversations. He sent me a nice little m message and everything. I think he knows I've been with him from the beginning. We've got other members that are with him, but I just want to let him know. And the American people got to know that if we don't change direction and we don't reelect Donald J. Trump, I don't know how we can't sustain what we've seen in the past three years, another four years with this bozo in office, this absent minded guy we have in office now, uh, it, it could be very, very difficult to recover with four more years of these policies. So this is a very important election. They always say this is the most important one. Uh, you know, no, this one is. This one here is do or die for the American people. And it's Donald J. Trump. And we all got to get out there and motivate our voters and make sure they don't try to rig and steal this one like they did in 2020. If you want to support the congressman, if you wish to learn more about what Joe Biden has truly wrought on the border, please go check out Borderless by Design, Congressman, congressman Nels's book endorsed by Donald Trump here. You can see right on Truth Social. This book by one of the greatest congressmen is fantastic. Get your copy now.
We have no country without strong borders. We got a country to save. Congressman, you're helping us save it. Godspeed. Thank you, Benny. God bless you. God bless your listeners. You're doing a hell of a job, Benny. Keep it up, buddy. You're doing this is what we need. We are being silenced. We are being silenced by the dishonest media, the greatest threat to our country, the dishonest media. So it's individuals like you and others. And Alex Jones, if you're listening, Alex Jones, you have a right to be a little bit flustered, right? Your feathers should be flustered right now with what that agent, that former CIA guy or that CIA guy said about you. And same with Tucker. I'll tell you, go after him. Go after him. This weaponization that the Republicans have said has happened with the DOJ. It's true, America. They're coming after Donald Trump. They're coming after anybody that's a mega movement individual. We got to push back. Let's win I, Trump so, 2020. So, just really quickly, since you brought it up, would you be in favor of subpoenas to figure out if this guy is telling the truth about Alex Jones? If they oh, really yeah. were targeting? Listen, everybody says a lot of stuff up here, Betty. You say this, you say that. This guy, I kind of looked at the guy. He looked a little like he's a little different. But what I would do is I would try to confirm, verify what he said. And if it's true, if it's true, and if it's accurate, I think Alex Jones should go after. They should go after the federal government without question. And I think Tucker and everybody else should do it. These are abuses that the American people will not tolerate. We will not tolerate these abuses by the DOJ. The weaponization has been taking place. They've gone after Donald Trump for years. It's all going to stop. Trump 2024, baby. He's coming back. Congressman, Godspeed. Thank you. God bless you. All right. All right. It's encouraging. We try our hardest to be encouraging on this program and to be uplifting on this program. Uh, it's encouraging to have members of Congress like that. Isn't it nice to have somebody who's just like clear eyed, steely determination? Congressman Nels, ladies and gentlemen. So it turns out that if you committed an act of journalism, you'll be put in jail for a month by our federal government. Florida woman who was in possession of Ashley Biden's diary after she left it in a halfway house is now going to prison. That's right. So inside of this diary, which what can you say? Like Ashley Biden's on tape, literally confirming that this diary is real. They have her on on vid, on on the call. You have the recorded voice. Ashley Biden said, "Yep, that's my that's my stuff." The DOJ is effectively putting a woman in jail for a month. Uh, her name's Amy Harris because she found this diary, and then inside of the diary were message were were recollections and memories of Joe Biden showering with her I don't know read the diary yourself the pages are pu public go for it I mean like again don't come for me this is what actually Biden wrote why don't you ask Ashley Biden Tucker Carlson says that this should like like this should require a knock from the police obviously and some questioning of Joe Biden Ask Ashley Biden saying she's wondering if she was molested. This is her own hand in her own writing. People get so angry when we quote Joe Biden, when we literally just quote the guy, we just take the words he says and we quote them and people will get upset with us. Well, whatever, what do you want? What, uh, what missing context is there? It's Ashley Biden's hand. It's her diary. She admits it. The federal government admits it. And these are the kind of, some of the things that she writes in it. So it's worth asking. By the way, the only person that's getting punished for all of this is the person who found the diary. She just found it, gave it to a journalist, gave it to Project Veritas. Let's see if we can't get James O'Keefe on the, I'd love to get James O'Keefe on the program um, sometime this week to talk about this because this story is breaking and it's, I think, really, really important. Uh, so yeah, you go to federal prison if you find incriminating evidence of creepy malfeasance uh, with the Bidens, if that stuff's just like left and you find it, then you go to jail. See how that works? I wonder if it'll apply. Does it, does that like apply to Donald Trump? Cause I'm, I, I remember Hillary Clinton paying for lies to launder those lies to federal agencies to try and hurt Trump. Presumably that's why this person's going to jail. Lock her up. Yeah. 
Um, see if you can grab, hey, hey Alex, can you grab that Tucker segment on Ashley Biden's diary? I think that was like, honestly, the best, the best bricking out of like what actually happened here. As Tucker says that this is, th this by every measure should require a visit from the police. Ashley Biden writes, was I molested at a young age, showers with my dad, probably not appropriate. Again, this is worth a knock from local protective agencies to confirm what was going on, what the hell was going on here. Yeah. What the hell is going on? What the hell is going on in this country? Kamala Harris thinks Joe Biden is the funniest member of the cabinet. VP dishes on Netflix, Beyonce, and group texts in a podcast. So here's Kamala Harris, full cringe alert. Somebody who's gotten so much worse. So like while Donald Trump's aging in reverse, Kamala Harris is like, reverse Benjamin buttoning. She's like aged like 50 years in four. Uh, but here's the cringe alert for the day. Kamala fawning over Joe. <laughs> Dip into a little workplace gossip. If okay. You will. Okay. Who are your favorite coworkers in the cabinet? Who do you have the most fun with? Well, I mean, the person that I definitely have the most fun with is the president. He's fantastic. He's, um, he is, he can be very serious, obviously, but he, he's also got an incredible sense of humor. And, you know, it, back to your point, you have to find humor yes. in life yeah. if you're going to actually be able to get through it and be sane. Right. Right. And, um, and so there are moments where we just find the humor in a moment that otherwise, um, some others might not be able to see it. And then, you know, it's just important to not take yourself too seriously when everything is so serious. It's important to not take yourself so seriously when everything is so serious and serious and serious. And Joe Biden's so funny. <laughs> He's funny. Have you ever heard? Where is that funny Joe Biden? Would you like, could, could, you, could you trot him out for us? We'd love to see him. We'd like to laugh too. Ha ha ha. We like laughing. Where is Joe Biden? Where is that funny man? Can you show him to us? Proof of life, anyone? Yeah, there's no proof of life in our economy. Inflation unexpectedly rises to 3.5%, plunging Dow Jones uh, 450 points, all but ruling out summer cut to interest rates. So inflation at 3.5%. It's more like probably 10%. Price of eggs are, are up like 450%. Gas prices, what are they near you? Gas prices here are 350. And I think we have relatively cheap gas. But geez, like I've seen gas prices soaring back up again to like $5 and $6, depending on which coast you're on. It's madness, ladies and gentlemen. So they keep telling you, and uh, every president sort of lives and dies on their economy. Uh, and this is why they needed to wreck Trump's economy so desperately. Because Trump's economy was the greatest thing we've ever seen. Uh, this is the uh, financial report, not good hotter than expected 3.5 this is three tenths three tenths hotter than we looked at in the rear view mirror 3.2 to find a bigger number than 3.5 you're going back to may of last year when it was oh I, excuse me i am wrong september of last year when it was 3.7 and finally what many would consider the most important number uh year over year cpi core 3.8, hotter than expected, equals the rear view mirror. To, to find a higher number, January was 3.9. And what's the lowest it's been of late? Well, 3.8, our last look and what we have today actually is the lowest since 3.0 in April of 21. The issue is it's still running hot. Still very, very bad. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, our salt that live of the day. Very exciting for us. One of our favorite clips that we saw this morning, uh, a poll tested group on MSNBC. Uh, the salt flowed so beautifully on this clip. They brought in a bunch of Americans and asked, who would you prefer to run the economy? The, the key indicator, obviously, for any president and whether they're going to be successful. Who do you prefer to run the economy? Joe Biden or Donald Trump? And this was the answer. <laughs>
the undecided voters were also asked how they think President Biden is doing on the economy. Take a listen. I think he's been absolutely disastrous for the economy. Mm -hmm. I agree. Six, raise your hand if you think President Trump's policies on the economy would be better for your family personally. Raise your hand. All right. So that is everybody. You have areas here in Pennsylvania where it's just at a standstill right now. Like things are supposed to be being built and the interest rates are just way too high for people to to to, you know, invest in, and start moving, moving around. The interest rate is so high right now. And I know they're trying to um, cut the inflation down. But like if nobody is building, no, no businesses are really coming to Pennsylvania right now to keep us moving forward. Even if you're trying to um, buy a house because I'm trying to become a first time home buyer, the prices are so high right now. It's just hard. Is there anything Joe Biden could do or say between now and, and, and the time you vote that would make you feel differently about feeling that his policies would not be as good for your family on the economy? Or have you, have you pretty much decided that Trump's policies would be better for the economy. I mean, I feel like he doesn't even take accountability for what's at all with what's going on in the economy. Not even accountability. Like he's in denial that it's happening. The point is Biden needs to hear the people because when he's talking about the economy doing stellar, he's talking about the stock market. He's not looking at homelessness or joblessness. He's not at Hades point and thinking about how much it costs to go to the grocery store. And he's gaslighting literally everyone in the process. And, and Omar, you voted for Joe Biden last time, right? Yeah, yeah. Some really important and hard insights for the Biden campaign to hear there and hearing all that. You might think things are pretty bad for President Biden. That was not good. <laughs> you might think the, so. Uh, so Joe Biden just was ripped a new one. And we know he's already had like colorectal cancer. So yikes, uh, just ripped a new one live on MSNBC by every person we talked to. Doesn't matter who they were, where they're from. They're all saying they hate Joe Biden. Everyone is putting on a let's go Brandon baseball cap. Okay. And uh, you might think things are bad for Joe Biden, but actually they're good for Joe Biden. The one thing that they do have in common with Kim Jong-un is that these people would be able to be news broadcasters in North Korea. Everything is great. Dear leader has said production uh, is up 200%. Yeah, things are terrible. And they, things are particularly terrible for people that need to buy on a budget um, for people, especially, especially like young families who have kids who, uh, you know, kids, <laughs> there's a cost obviously associated with having kids. Diapers is one of those big costs. And that's why we're really, really proud to partner with Public Square. Public Square is a company that has a diaper brand that is a pro-life diaper brand. You'd be shocked to learn that many of the diaper brands out there are actually pro-abortion and are for the elimination of their own customer base, which is pretty sick, despicable, but goes the way of Bud Light and Disney and Target and all these other evil brands. Pro-life diaper company donates supply, lifetime supply of diapers to murdered New York Police Department officers. Family Massive outpouring from Every Life. Every Life is the uh, diaper brand of the Johnson household. And Jonathan Diller has a young son who it was robbed. So his father was stolen from him because of a career criminal that was let out of jail 21 times, had an illegal firearm, killed his father, who was a cop. And uh, it's a tragic story. Husband stolen from wife, father stolen from son. Um, Every Life is stepping up and is making sure that these guys, well, that, that I guess there's, that they get the, they guess there's a community of people that do believe in life. And it was really amazing how like the black lives matter movement, like doesn't, doesn't correlate to every life matter. Like where are the people, where are the people marching for Jonathan Diller? Like wh where's that? Right. After all the horrors that have been wrought in these last couple of years, it's nice to see somebody actually, it's nice to see somebody actually stand up. So, uh, we're proud to obviously, uh, support public square, support the independent and creator economy, the freedom economy. And that's why, uh, you can find a fluffy every life diapers on, uh, the behinds of the Johnson children. There's not gonna be any pro pro abortion diapers in my household. We are in favor of every life having value.
And that is why we use every life. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we uh, deeply appreciate uh, the ability to speak freely on this program, and we deeply appreciate you. Uh, we love doing this show, and we love delivering uh, truth. There's a little weird murkiness out there right now. There's like a really strange energy. It seems like it's hard to really know what is true every single day. And that is why we end our show with the verse of the day so that we at the very least give you one rock solid true thing. And this verse from Psalms 138 couldn't be more perfect. As I walk through the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies and your right hand delivers me. Ladies and gentlemen, there is trouble in life, and that is guaranteed. There's going to be trouble and tribulations that we're going to walk through the wrath of our enemies. Ladies and gentlemen, God will deliver us. We will march in victory. It is ours, the victory assured. And so be joyful. Be happy warriors. Can't defeat an army of happy warriors. That's what we are here, marching right alongside you, fighting right alongside you. It's your boy, Benny. See ya.